ますHello everybody, MegazadX here, back at it again to give you another very exciting video, and for today, I'm going to be talking about none other than the Game Awards, because recently, just yesterday, we did manage to get all the nominations for Game of the Year, Art Direction, you know, the overall music score, you know, all those different um, categories. They were all revealed yesterday, and I was like, you know what, I hadn't voted on them just yet, but might as well make a video out of it, kind of explaining, you know, my thoughts on some of the selections that are nominated and some of my own personal picks, and you'll get to see um, here in this video uh, what I'm actually going to vote for for all the different categories, though. And whenever the Game Awards actually take place, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to actually live react um, to the Game Awards because, you know, they always have some crazy announcements that are announced during the Game Awards. And, oh, shoot, that takes me back to last year because, oh, shoot, last year, oh, man, that was something. Are they doing Smash first? To arrive. Oh shoot! Wait! Whoa! 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 whoa. What the freak? Oh, oh, no! Oh shoot! No! 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 Hey, everybody, calm down! Calm down! Calm down! Calm down! Calm down. What the freak? What the who? Who did that? Who did that? Wait! What? 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 No! 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 What is it? What is it? What is it? No! Wait! <laughs> so we'll go ahead and pull it up here real quick though and um we'll, we'll just take it one category at a time um starting off from the very bottom um starting off from best esport event up until we're going to work our way to the grand finale being the game of the year so um some of these categories i do know that um i'm probably not gonna have too much to say on it based upon some of the nominees like probably the esports event i i, I just want to kind of take a look at everything they have to offer though but some things i you know i'll be able to throw my opinions on some things uh not so much well let's start with the esport thing so uh best esport uh so we got League of Legends over here, the international PGL major. I I, I guess you had to be like a huge esports. I like I, I like my esports with some of my stuff, but I'm like, you, you really have to be up in this stuff, I guess, to know any of these. Yeah, I, I'm just looking at these, and and I think for the most part, if I had no like, if I don't hear any like good word of mouth from like any of the people I kind of interact with in the community or based upon my own opinions on it, like, you know, from the experience I have personally gained, I probably won't actually vote for any of the categories. Like, these, I, like, in good consciousness, I can't really vote on any of those. So we'll go ahead and skip past that one, and we'll go over to the next one, Best Esport Coach. Let's see what, um, uh, let's see what's up in this one, though. Uh, huh, Silent, mm -hmm. Adrian English, Audrey, James, Kim, you know what? If I had to pick, pick a vote, uh, it would have been based upon, um, you know what? This dude right here, he, he's wearing a he's he's wearing a pretty snaggy little hat, I like that little design on the shirt. Uh, my vote would have gone to him if um, <laughs> my vote would have gone to him if I had to vote for sure though. Let's see, what's best esports team? Uh, Atlanta Phase, DWG, hmm, Sentiums. Based on names. I'll, I'll probably would gave it to the Sentinels. Like, you know, you don't hear that every single day, though. Sorry, so let, let's go back and look at the other categories here. Um, best eSport athlete. Bruh, I, this is the weird stuff. I, I guess you really have to be up in eSports as a huge thing. Uh, Chris, uh, Tyson, Tyson, like the like the chicken plant? What the? Hero, oh, I was about to say hero. Heyo. Um, okay, it's simple and clean over there um collapse mm, okay all right well let's move on to the next one though um let's see here best esports game all right maybe i can recognize a game let's see here call of duty okay um counter-strike ball offensive dota 2 ha, our boy over there league of legends and valorant um you know what honestly i cannot vote call of duty based upon the whole activision thing that's going on right now this is one i probably will vote on i always hear a lot of stuff you always hear the ads for league of legends all the time so i'm just gonna go ahead and uh vote um league of legends over there 
All right, so there we go. So I got it saved. So let, let's go back to the other categories there. So that was my first vote right there. All right, so let's move on to most anticipated game. I think from all of these categories from here on out, I will have something to actually say. Because those first five-ish categories are kind of rough, but this point moving forward i'll actually be able to have some thoughts on it though so anyway so uh most anticipated game we have elden ring god of war ragnarok horizon forbidden west the sequel to legend of zelda breath of the wild and starfield and gosh like this alone and this is not even all the games we know that's coming out in the year of 2022 but this right here definitely sets the stage like there's a lot of good games that are going to be coming out next year and honestly even looking on the switch side of things it looks like it's going to be almost like a repeat for the most part of what 2017 is going to have to offer and it's interesting how we're having horizon forbidden west and the sequel to legend of zelda breath of the wild having it in the same year in a similar manner i think way back in 2017 with the first horizon and the first breath of the wild though but out of all of these, personally, I think my vote is going to go to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild because just how much crazy things they were able to do and pull off with that open world um, with the first Breath of the Wild, though. But I will give a nod for those that are really looking forward to Horizon Forbidden West. I do have Horizon Zero Dawn on my PS5. I managed to get it for free through the, the, summer, play, or, you know, the summer play event during the COVID year 2020, though. But I also will give a nod to people like Elden Ring. Elden Ring is not necessarily my cup of tea, though. But based upon the beta play testing and, like, my friend Sonic U and stuff, he actually managed to go hands-on and play on that game. I know some people are definitely looking forward to that game in particular. And, obviously, a lot of people like God of War, um, God of War um, Ragnarok and, you know, like the original God of War. And I know a lot of people looking forward to that as well. And start this is going to be a tough one, and I'm kind of curious how it's going to play out, though. But my vote definitely goes with um, the Breath of the Wild sequel, though. So let's go ahead and jump over to the next category over here. Um, best debut indie. Hmm. So we got over here the Artful Escape, The Forgotten City, Kenna Bridge of Spirits, Sable, and um, Valheim? Valheim? I don't know how you pronounce it, though. But out of all of these, the only one I actually heard about was Kenna, and I actually do have it wishlisted on my PS5, so that's where my vote is going on. I mean, not too hard of a vote for me, though, but uh, good luck for all of the, the indie studios out there and see if y'all can actually win. Now, Content Creator of the Year. All right, this is where I kind of have some personal problems, here, or ha have some <laughs> personal problems, have some issues here with some of these, uh, of course, as always, I don't hardly know any of these people, but one person I do know that I don't necessarily watch, I watched a couple of vid his videos every now and then though, but Scott the Waz, like, I, I, I don't get it. Like, how in the world is he not on this thing? Like, the dude is literally going to TV. I don't personally watch a lot of his videos, but I can give credit where credit is due. You don't see a lot of YouTubers say, hey, I'm going to start making, you know, videos, not just on YouTube, but on TV, where you can just sit down on the couch and watch him. I don't understand how he's not on here. No discredit to all the other people that managed to make it on this list, but at least include him up on here. I don't know. I, in good consciousness, I cannot vote for this category right here, so I'm just going to have to skip it. Uh, best multiplayer. We got Back for Blood, Knockout City, It Takes Two, Monster Hunter Rise, New World, and Valheim. Uh, based upon all of these, the only game I actually managed to dabble in a little bit. I still need to go through and actually, you know, put the time and actually go through and actually beat it though. But my vote will go with Monster Hunter Rise. Um, not too hard of a choice right there though. And we'll go back. All right. So best sports slash racing. Uh oh. Here we go. Um, F1 2021, FIFA 22, 2022, Forza Horizon 5. Hot Wheels Unleashed and Riders Republic. What the heck? Hold on. Why did they throw sports and racing up in the... What the... Oh, okay, that's weird. Okay. That's weird. And you know what? For a second, I was thinking maybe they would have put um, Forza up in here. Oh, no. No, they did. No. Yeah, they did put Forza up in here. Um, hmm. I guess based on reputation... I am not giving it to FIFA. FIFA, literally, I think... was it? That was like a roster update? Like, that's all they did. They roster updated the thing, and that was about it. Not too much that was crazy added to there. I'll just put down Forcer for the people that really like that, because I, I heard some really good things on, on that game, though, so I, I'll just put the vote down for that. Um, best Sim slash Strategy. Uh, 
Age of Empires 4, Evil Genius 2, World of Domination, Humankind, Encryption, and Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, based upon what I know, I probably would say Flight Simulator, and I remember whenever that game first came out, I think it was like PC only before I think you could play it on, my, on like the Xbox Series X. But from what I heard on it, like this is like the most realistic kind of simulation you could probably get. And I heard a lot of good things about it. If you're like one of those people that really love simulation games, like I think that is it. And I'm pretty sure that has a good chance of winning right there. So we'll go ahead and move on. Best family game. This is where the Nintendo games normally kick out at. It Takes Two, Mario Party Superstars, New Pokemon Snap, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, and WarioWare Get It Together. Um, shoot. Okay, now this one's a little tough because um, I, I played Mario Party. I played 3D World. I, I I can't remember. Did I play this demo or not? But I've seen enough of the game on this. And I know my brother has played this game. I hadn't personally played it, though. But I kind of know what's basically the premise of all four of these games, though. Uh... If it's family, family, like, you know, with the inclusion of multiple people, I think it goes to Mario Party. But me personally, I really did like um, three. Well, no, then again, 3D World, you could play with multiple people, even online. Like they included that with the baseline game. And obviously Bowser's Fury is just solo. Oh, actually, now that I think about it. Mm. Oh, goodness. Okay, Bowser's Fury makes me want to place it over here. But overall, for the overall family experience, I think my vote has to go with Mario Party Superstars. This is a close second. And I imagine you can have fun with new Pokemon Snap, although that's mostly single player. And then uh, WarioWare, I know you probably have some good old fun if you're playing with a couple people here locally, though. But my vote would definitely have to go with Mario Party Superstars. So that was a little tougher to throw my vote up in there, the 04. But um, I guess that's where I'm going to currently stand on that one. Now, moving over to best fighting game. Oh, shoot. Here we go. Uh, Demon Slayer. <laughs> okay. Uh, Guilty Gear. Uh-huh. Melty Blood. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. And Virtual Fighter Five Ultimate Showdown. Huh. Okay. I I honestly don't know where I stand on this. Like, Nickel like this was just good for the memes. I would just say that. But I had had a couple of friends play um, Melty Blood. Um, a few of my friends play Melty Blood, and that was pretty good. Hadn't heard too much on the Demon Slayer fighting game. And not too, too much on these two. So if I had to pick, it really would come down between Melty Blood and Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Gosh, I, I don't know. Uh, this is this is literally like a coin flip right now. I, I honestly do not know. Uh, shoot. I guess I'll just put Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl. Let's just, just see what happens. We'll, we'll just see. I don't know which one is going to win that category, but <laughs> we're just going to have to wait and see. All right, so best role-playing game. All right. Okay. I have to pause for a moment. This game literally made it in the best role-playing game. It's not really like a typical RPG in the sense of what we think about with other games. Oh, whatever. Uh, Monster Hunter Rise, Scarlet Nexus, Shin Megami Tensei 5 just recently came out, and Tales of Horizon. And hmm, they, they had some good, they had some good nominations. I agree with all four of these. It just kind of sucks how Cyberpunk 2077 managed to show up in any shape, form, or capacity, or in any shape, form, or capacity for these nominations. Like what? The, I, I'm just that's an X factor. No, I, no, I'm not doing it. But Let's see here. I think out of all of these, these are some good ones. I do want to probably go through and play Scarlet Nexus at home. I was watching the anime. Anime is okay, but I kind of want to go through and play the game. I have that. Seen a lot of good stuff on that. Hear some good stuff about that, even though it's not necessarily my cup of tea. I've heard a lot of things about Tales of Horizon. But me personally, I think I have to go with Monster Hunter Rise. But I wouldn't be surprised if Shin Megami Tensei Five or Tales of Horizon happens to win as well. Shin Megami Tensei 5 did come out most recently. Maybe with the fan vote, it could, a good amount of votes can get pointed towards that. But in terms of the critics, I think more time has digested for Monster on the Rise or Tales of the Rise. I feel like it's going to be one of these three. But I'm going to go ahead and put my vote on uh, Monster on the Rise. All right, let's see here. Next one will be Best Action Slash Adventure. Let's see here. 
Um, okay, we got some good ones over here. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. I do want to get that game, but I don't have it yet. My boy over there, Metroid Dread. Hype, hype, hype. Um, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and Resident Evil Village. Okay. Heard or seen some things about 40s, and Psychonauts 2, heard a little bit about, not too much. Honestly, my personal votes will literally go towards Metroid Dread, or it will be Ratchet and Clank Ripped Apart. Because uh, I played through this game, but I hadn't, hadn't played through this one, but I've seen a lot of good footage, and that game looks absolutely phenomenal. I'm hoping to pick it up for Black Friday, though, but... Based upon these, I had to give it to him. Uh, I gotta give it to the, to the um, I gotta give it to my girl Samus over there. Like, like she did phenomenal in her game. So we're gonna go ahead and move on. Best VR slash AR. I don't really have too much to say on. Yeah, Resident Evil Four. Well, mm, Resident Evil Four, Lone Echo Two. I expect to die. Hitman and Sniper Elite VR. I heard a lot of good things about Resident Evil Four. I'm just gonna put a vote over there on that. I, I did manage to play a little bit of Resident Evil 4 on my channel. You can check out that video, though, but I kind of sucked on that first opening. Um, that first opening area within that village, though. But, uh, but yeah. All right, so innovation and in accessibility. Let's see here. What's what's up in this one? Okay. Um, Far Cry 6, Forza Horizon 5, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, Ratchet and Clank Ripped Apart, and The Veil, Shadow of the Crown. I guess... Based upon what I kind of seen, it's going to be between one of these two. And I, I'm just going to put Ratchet and Clank down for that one, though. And we'll go ahead and move on to the other one. Uh, let's see here. Best Community Support. Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Final Fantasy XIV Online, Fortnite, and No Man's Sky. Alrighty, so at least for this one. I don't play really any of these games. But I have friends and I always hear stuff all the time about Final Fantasy XIV and Fortnite. So it's going to be between one of those two. And honestly, oh shoot, it's, it's a coin flip if I were going to choose one of the two. Uh, okay. Even though I'm not a personal fan of this game, I played it a little bit. I'll give it to Fortnite, only because they do some of the Marvel collaborations. I love kind of seeing some of those Marvel, um, my Marvel characters being shown up in the game, though. So, uh, so for my Marvel friends out there, like, yes, use Sonic. Yes, uh, th there's your one vote. There's your one vote. All right, I, I threw one in there for you, bro. All right, so let's see here. Best mobile game. Okay. Uh, Fantasium, Genshin Impact. Huh, <laughs> Genshin Impact. Um, League of Legends, uh, Wild Rift, Marvel Future Revolution, and Pokemon Unite. Okay. Um, you know what? I would say Pokemon Unite. That was a game I played, and, uh, and for the most part, while I was actively playing with some of my friends, we had a pretty good time playing Pokemon Unite. So, I'll, I'll, I'll share a little bit of love right there. We'll, we'll go ahead and put it down. Best Indie. Okay, here we go. 12 Minutes, Death's Door, Inscription, Kenna, Bridge of Spirits, and Loop Hero. Out of all of these, I really only heard about one, and it's the one I still have on my wish list. So, the vote will go with Kenna, Bridge of Spirits. From everything I heard from most people, they say that... It looks absolutely beautiful. In front of some of the footage, I also looked at as well. I mean, the game looks really nice. And it this might possibly be the first indie game I probably will play on my PS5 as well. All right, so let's go back. Best Ongoing. Now, I feel like Best Ongoing was for, it's almost in the same category as Best Support. Um, Apex, Final Fantasy XIV, Fortnite, Get Your Impact, Call of Duty Warzone, staying away from the Activision stuff. Uh, yeah, once again, I will put it down for Fortnite once again. So, Sonic, you got two votes for Fortnite. I wouldn't think I would actually do that twice. All right, let's see here. All right, games for Impact. Before your eyes, Boyfriend, oh, Boyfriend Dungeon, how the heck? Anyway, um, A Colorful Tale, Life is Strange, and No Longer Home. Okay, this is one of those weird categories. I don't think I can personally say anything or recommend anything, so I'm just going to have to skip this one, unfortunately, though. Uh, best performance. All right. Erica Mori as Alex Chen from Life is Strange. That dude from Far Cry 6. Jason Kelly from Deathloop. Maggie, okay, from Resident Evil Village. And another woman from Deathloop. Uh, they're really loving that Deathloop over here, though. 
Uh, honestly, I, I can't say because I never heard any of their voices. I imagine they did a phenomenal job on each one of their um, their voices that they had to, for all their characters that they had to voice on. But I honestly, I don't I don't have anything to say about it because I just didn't get to hear them though. All right, so best audio design. Here we go. Deathloop, Forza Horizon 5, Ratchet and Clank, Resident Evil Village, and Returnal. Hmm, if I had to choose one for audio design, I think I heard some good stuff with Resident Evil Village. Like, I guess, you you know, playing the game in the dark with some good he headphones on and stuff like that. Like, the scare factor, like, where it kind of hits you at. I imagine that one's probably fairly good. And then I think Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart might be fairly well. So, I, I think my vote comes down between one of those two. But uh, I think I'll give it to Resident Evil Village. I think I heard a little bit. I think I heard a little, um, heard some better things about it for Resident Evil Village than maybe over Ratchet and Clank. So uh, that, there's your vote, Sonic Q. I, I, I put one down for Resident Evil Village. Be happy. All right, so uh, let's see here. Moving on. Best score in music. And looking at these five, I'm drastically disappointed. But I'll talk about it here in a minute. The Artificial Escape. How the heck did this thing get back in here again? Deathloop. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy and their replicant version 1. Point yada 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 yada. Okay, I will say this. I'm kind of sad that the fact that Neo the World Ends with You kind of got gypped in this because number one, I feel like it it should have been in like at least a couple of categories. One of them in particular should have been for best score in music as well as the RPG. And I think it got snuffed out for both of those two categories. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, literally, the music in Neil, The World Ends With You is so great, so phenomenal. If you hadn't played that game, please go play that game. I feel like it got gypped in these nominations this year, though. But out of what's presented right here, I I'll just throw one in for my boy Guardians of the Galaxy because I heard about it being a good game or whatever, though. So I'll just throw one out there for it, and we'll go ahead and move on over. Best Art Direction. Darfield Escape, Deathloop. Deathloop is in almost every single thing. If Deathloop, kid you not, if Deathloop goes through and g gets a whole bunch of W's up on this thing, I'm going to be like, what the actual heck? Uh, Ken of Bridge of Spirits, Psychonauts 2, and Ratchet Clank ripped apart. I think my personal two would literally be between Kenna and Ratchet and Clank. Because both of these look really good as PS5 games. But I think I'll throw my vote towards Ratchet and Clank. Easily could have been Kenna as well, but I'll throw it towards Ratchet and Clank on that one, though. All right, let's see here. All right, getting close to the end. Getting close to that game of the year. Best narrative. Deathloop, It Takes Two, Life is Strange, uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, or Psychonauts 2. I don't think I can really say too much on the best narrative for any of these. Because I hadn't... Obviously, you have to kind of play the game for it, though. But I'll just throw, I'll just throw another vote out for Mars Guardians of the Galaxy. I just want pretty much almost anything but Death. I don't know. I'm kind of sick and tired of Death Loop at Death Loop at this point, though. But uh, anything but that, that's what I'm basically going for at this point, though. Um, let's see here. Best game direction. Death Loop once again. It takes two. Returnal, Psychonauts two, and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Alrighty. I guess I'll throw it again towards Ration and Clank. Uh, I guess it's pretty self explanatory similar to the last vote. Alrighty. We went through all of these categories. Had to skip some. Voted really good on some others. But now, it's time for none other, the big one being Game of the Year. And here we go. We got Deathloop. Once again. It takes two. Okay. Metroid Dread. Hype, hype, hype. Psychonauts 2. Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, all right, and Resident Evil Village. That's the one I'm kind of the most shocked about because I literally thought they literally could have threw in um, Monster Hunter Rise. I was almost expecting Monster Hunter Rise, that being the other Capcom game, to actually be the one that gets into this discussion, discussion over Resident Evil Village. Kind of shocked, but okay. And out of all of these, I think you have like a wide variety. It ain't like that. They ain't like that big old one, like a Breath of the Wild or like an Odyssey or like a, a like a Horizon or a God of War. It ain't one of those kind of really massive triple A titles up here, though. But I think each one of these games, as you go through and look at them, maybe Deathloop is probably the longest. But I think all the rest of them 
almost like 10 hour experiences, roughly, give or take 10 hour experiences, which is kind of interesting. Like the diversity on game of the year is a little bit, it's a little more flavorable. You got you got a little bit of a taste like it. We got one that's basically like um an um like an action basically like an action game right here. Um, you know, your horror kind of game right there. You got your 2D platformer over there and uh and so forth and so on though. So a kind of wide variety here. But looking at all of these, I'll say my third place vote to get game of the year will probably be Resident Evil Village based on stuff I heard and maybe someday I might get the game I don't know my number two would be Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart and lastly my big number one would be Metroid Dread that is my vote that I hope that manages to win game of the year and maybe if we can manage to get our girl Samus to get game of the year Maybe it'll give a lot more recognition towards some 2D games. Say, hey, 2D games can still be just as good as 3D games. And also, this might be the, the final surge. If this thing manages to win game of the year, I'm like, heck yes, Samus is back. And who would have who would have thought Samus would have came out from like, you know, because Samus, in terms of like Nintendo's IPs and stuff, it's not your Legend of Zelda. It's not your Mario. It's not your Pokemon. It's not your Animal Crossing that just boomed up out of nowhere. It's not any one of those. So the fact that if this can manage to hit, start it from the bottom as a series as a whole in terms of the, the other recognition for other games that sit next to it with Nintendo IPs, the becoming game of the year, oh shoot, we might actually manage to get this to sell over 3 million copies. That's my whole goal for Samus right there though. So yes, that is my vote though. But y'all gotta let me know in the comment section down below. Um, what were your other thoughts on any of the other categories or especially your game of the year pick? Like I, I wanna hear what was your game of the year. If you, if you say your game of the year is Resident Evil Village or Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, I respect that. I will, I will respect that based upon stuff I've seen and heard about so far now if you're one of those people that's voting with metro dread with me yes let's get on this train and let's push our girl to get over that hurdle though and um and outside of that that's basically all i had planned for um in this video though so y'all gotta let me know um in the comment section down below um any other games that you might have thought that also might have got jipped out of here i'm, I'm kind of curious like for me personally neo the world ends with you is one i felt like kind of got jipped out of this thing i would love to actually have um my other one being the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. I wish that one would have showed up in here in any kind of shape, form, or capacity, though. I think those two are some of my major complaints, along with Scott the Wise being jipped for Content Creator of the Year. But let me know about that as well, though. Just a reminder for all of y'all, I do have a giveaway that's going on on my channel where you can actually win a free copy of Ori and the Blind Forest. So if you really want to... Um, win a copy of that game check down in the description box down below i do have a link that jumps you over to that video where you actually have a chance to enter into that giveaway though so yes and giveaway north american digital copy for that game though but that's basically going to do it for this video though so if you really like this video make sure to go ahead and hit that like button go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell to stay up to date on all things video game related i feel like talking about and discussing and hopefully in the future whenever um the game awards actually take place I'll actually manage to be able to do a live reaction of it, probably with my crew or whatever, though, because uh, I know we had some good fun times there in the past, though. So that's going to basically do it. So remember, y'all, until whatever video I make next, see y'all.